Hey guys, how are you? Well, old Mopars are fascinating cars to own and drive. As you've seen my videos, I have a few myself. And uh, I frequent the message boards about these cars and enjoy reading articles and posts and things on there. And one thing I've come across often that distresses me is when someone buys a used Mopar, one of these old Dodges or Chryslers or Plymouths, and it turns out that it doesn't have the original engine in it, and they didn't know this until they got some help uh, after the fact, after they'd already bought the engine and the car, of course. Or maybe you have a vintage Mopar and you need an engine for it, and you see them for sale, and you find something that sounds like a good deal. And you come in, and the seller pulls the cover off like this, and you're faced with a generic-looking blue small block Chrysler engine. They all look very similar, there's just minor details. You know, valve covers and intakes and exhaust manifolds all interchange for the most part. So, you know, what do you have here? How do you avoid making a mistake? How do you avoid um, getting a 318 when the seller claims it's an ultra rare 340 or a 360? Well, it's quite easy. Uh, these engines have stamp numbers and casting numbers in several locations on a lot of things. Chrysler is very good about that. They're probably one of the best about telling you information on the engine itself. So let's dig into this a little bit and see what we have. Now this engine, I know what this engine is. I know what it came out of. And let's just say for example that this engine is being represented as a Chrysler 360 engine from 1978. Now, uh, this is a good scenario because if you don't know where to look, you're not going to know any difference until you get in it and it runs like you ain't got any power, which it won't if it's a 318 or something else. So, uh, let's take a look. First thing you need to do, the seller may not like this, but you need to talk him into it. You need to come down here to the front of the block, right under the passenger side, excuse me, driver side head. That's the driver side head as you're facing the engine. You got the water pump here in the front, here at the driver side of the block, right under the head. Scrape the paint off and clean it off real well. And you will see a series of numbers here. Now look at the first five here on this one. This is going to be a tip off right away. You see there, that says 5M318. Now that 5 on the front, that should be the year code. Next is the plant code. So 318, that's a displacement. They always stamp them. So first clue that this is not a 1978 360 is because the year code's wrong and the displacement says 318 instead of 360. So that's our first piece of evidence. So let's go under. You'll have to get under the car for this. This engine's out on a pallet, but you'll need to be underneath the car and look on the driver's side, on the side of the block. Here's a casting number that's cast in. 400-6730-318. I believe that's a one on the end, or a three, but that, the end's not important necessarily. This part you see there, that 318, there again, that's the casting number, that's the displacement number. So this is your block casting number here, this first seven digit code, and then this next three, that's going to be your displacement. This again says this is a 318. So, we've uh, irrefutable evidence that this is a 318 block. So he says it's from 1978. Well. Let's just find out about that. Go on the passenger side. Again, you'll have to be under the car to see this, but look right up here above and kind of to the rear of the motor mount. And you will see there's the casting date. This one happens to see it's hard to read. But this one says 12-6 of 74. That's when the block was cast. 
Now this car that this came out of was a very early January built car. So this is pointing, January this is 1975 as a matter of fact, so it's pointing, the evidence is pointing that this is a 75 318. And that's in fact what it is. So there you go. There's your three pieces of evidence to tell you exactly what this engine is. It's 318 from 1975, cast a very late part of 1974. So there's really at this point, there's no further uh, verification needed. That tells you everything you need to know. So you can tell the seller he's full of it or he's correct. Lots of times they're full of it now. Here's something else we can look at. There's a casting number on the exhaust manifolds and also a date. This one says 1015 of 74. So uh, this exhaust manifold was cast, it's been cast a while before the engine was put together. And then you have a, a tag on your distributor back here. You can see that. That's a, that right there. The bottom part's just a part number. And then that 59 of 4, that's the 59th day of 4. I'm sorry, that's a. Yeah, that's a. Hard to read there, isn't it? That's a 38. I'm sorry. That's not what that means. On these, that means that's the 38th week of 1974. So, uh, that's how you decode that. And then up here on the intake manifold, you also have a part number for it. Let's see where it's at. It's back here on the back. Right here is going to be your part number. Hard to see here. This one's kind of gunky and junky, but it's back here on the back just in front of the distributor and it's got a date code also on it right here and that looks like I'm gonna guess that's a one looks like a one three of 75 so that would be original of course also this engine so Now the alternators, things like alternators also have part numbers on them and date codes. They're not always that easy to find, especially if they've been uh, remanufactured and sandblasted. This one I'm going to take a look at to see <clears throat> if it's got one. Yeah, here's the, here's the casting number on the alternator. It's back here at the back and it's right under that tab right there and that that 5305 I guess that's probably going to be the uh, that's in the 10,000 day calendar so that's going to be your, your date, your casting date and also should be some of these got a somewhere on them got a little starburst of a deal like that it's also your date I don't see it on this one this one's been remanufactured it's got a bosh on it so but sometimes there'll be like a little star looking wheel type of thing and it'll have two digits in it like a 74 or 75 or an 80 or a 68 or something like that and that's your <clears throat> that's your year for that Okay, folks, uh, hopefully that'll give you some information about all this kind of thing and you won't get screwed over on an engine deal or a car deal. Now, also I want to show you real quick on the transmission. There's numbers on part numbers and things on the pan under here, which I'm not going to decode them for you. I don't remember it right off the top of my head. You have to really kind of look these up, but this P and then that's a 374, uh, 34, I guess that is. 
and some other numbers back along here. That's that's a part number. This is a, a 904 transmission. It's probably the original. That up there, that doesn't mean anything. That's just uh, just something they cast into these for their own internal use. But uh, yeah, so that's how you find out, guys, on Mopars where to find these numbers at. So. Be sure don't get taken for a ride. Be sure to check this stuff out when you're buying a car or an engine. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.